Hey, it's Greg from The Code Creative. In this video, we're going to learn all about creating and using custom events in JavaScript. Normally, when we're talking about events, we're talking about those native browser events, like the click, the key press, and the mouse over, and so on. When we write our code, we add event listeners to various DOM elements, and then typically, the user will do some kind of interaction with the browser. And at that point, the browser is the one that's going to actually dispatch the event. And these events are asynchronous. So they're part of the event loop, and they get triggered when the user performs some kind of action in the browser. Custom events, on the other hand, are synchronous. We dispatch them ourselves, programmatically, within our code. Another name for these custom events, by the way, are synthetic events. So let's get going, and we'll talk about the mechanics of creating and dispatching these custom events, and we'll also look at how to put them into practice. Now, there are going to be three steps that we need to go through in order to create and work with our custom events. As you might have guessed it, the first one is to just create the event itself. Now, once our event has been created, we also want to be listening for that event. And then finally, we'll need some way to actually fire or dispatch that event. So let's go ahead and get started and learn how to first create our custom event. So in order to create our custom event, there are two constructors that we need to know about. The first one is simply called event, and the other one is called custom event. And the only real difference between them is that with the custom event, we can also pass in some custom data of our own. Regardless of which constructor we go with, we're going to want to create an instance of it, and we'll do that by using the new keyword. So we'll put aside the custom event constructor for now, and we'll just focus on the event constructor. What we need to pass into the event constructor is the name that we want to give our custom event. And being a custom event, this can be any name that we choose. And we want to make sure that we pass in this argument as a string. And finally, let's assign this instance to a variable or a constant. In this case, we'll call it const greg event. And so this instance object for the custom event will be assigned to greg event. Now, the next step that we talked about was actually listening for the event. So we can listen for an event on any element that we want. In this case, we're listening on the document object, and we're using add event listener. And as you can see, the event type here is that custom event name that we just created. And then we have the third piece of the puzzle, which is actually dispatching the event. So here we're using the dispatch event method, and we can call it on any element that we want. And notice here what we're passing in. We're not passing in that string of the custom event name. We're passing in that event object, which we assigned to the const, const greg event. And by the way, if you want to learn more about this whole world of DOM events in JavaScript, well, we go deep into these topics in my course on DOM events in JavaScript. I'll drop a link in the comments and description section down below for you so you can check it out. So coming into VS Code now, I'm here in my index.html file, and I've got a pair of script tags. And here in my JavaScript, you can see those three steps that we just talked about. Here we're first creating the event. Here we're listening for that event on the document object. And here we're dispatching that event on the document object as well. So what I'd like to do now is go ahead and save my index.html file, and we'll take a look in the console. You can see in this event handler here that we're logging out the event object that we get when we dispatch Greg event. So let's save and see what we get. And here in the console, we can see that we're getting that event object. So just notice two things for the moment. The first is that the type of event is right here with our custom name, Greg event, and our event target is the document. Now what I want to do is I want to use that custom event constructor instead of just the event constructor and point out one difference in this event object. So now that I have custom event, I'm going to go ahead and save again. And now here in the console, we see custom event. And notice this property here called detail. Notice that it's initialized to a value of null. So you remember I said before that with custom event, we had the ability to pass in data. And it's this detail property which allows us to do that. So as just a really simple example, if I come into my custom event constructor, I can pass in a second argument, which is going to be an options object. And here I can use that detail property, and I can assign it to a value of whatever I want. It can be a simple string, a number, a boolean, or it can be an array or an object or whatever. For now, let's just make it a string. Let's just save the code creative, and let's save once again. And now here you can see that that detail property has a value of the code creative. 
Now in terms of the second argument, which is this options object, I wanted to just start with the detail property to point out the difference between event and custom event. But for both event and custom event, there are three other properties that we can use here in this object. And those are as follows. We have bubbles, we have cancelable, and we have composed. And these all default to a value of false. So let's save once again and let's look in the custom events object. And here we can see bubbles false, cancelable false, and composed false. The two properties that we'll take a look at now are bubbles and cancelable. So to look at bubbles, let's put two divs into our HTML body. The first one will give a class of outer, and the second one will give a class of inner. And this is just to create a hierarchy where we have a parent-child relationship. I'm not even going to bother styling these for now because it doesn't really matter for the sake of this explanation. I just want to show you what this bubbles will do. So up till now we've been listening on the document object and we've also been dispatching on the document object. But now let's say that we have these two divs and what we want to do is we want to listen on this outer div and we want to dispatch from the inner div. Well let's go ahead and set that up. So what we can do here, instead of saying document.addEventListener, we can say document.querySelector, and we'll pass in that div with the class of outer. And then as we said, we want that inner div to be the one dispatching the event. So again, we'll do document.querySelector, this time passing in that div with the class of inner. And so at this point, let's save and let's see what we get in the console. Well, here you can see we're not getting anything. We're not logging out this event object. And that's because the event that's being dispatched by the center div is not bubbling. See, bubbles is false. So in order to remedy that, we can set bubbles to true. Now when this div dispatches the event, that event should bubble up the DOM hierarchy, and since this outer div is listening for that same event, its event handler should run, and we should see the event logged out to the console. So let's save, and here we see it's working now. We get the custom event. Now let's take a look at cancelable. So as we said, the default is going to be false. And what this means is that if I come into the event handler and I said event.preventDefault and then we save and we take a look at the custom event object, what you can see is that default prevented is actually false. So this means that prevent default didn't actually do anything. And that's because cancelable is false, meaning that it's not currently possible to prevent the default behavior of this event. However, if we come to cancelable and we say true, and now let's save again, and we'll check it out one more time. Well, now you can see that default prevented is true. So that prevent default was allowed to do its magic and prevent the default behavior, whatever that might be. And we can see that yes, cancelable is now set to true. Now for the compose property, this has to do with the shadow DOM. And if we look on MDN, we can see that it's a Boolean value indicating whether the event will trigger listeners outside of a shadow root. So far, we've looked at how to create a custom event. We've seen how to create it, how to listen to it, and how to dispatch it. And we saw by using the custom event constructor in particular, we can also pass in some custom data using that detail property. But we haven't really seen a really good use case for this. So what I want to look at now is how we can use the ability to create these custom events in order to create decoupling in our code. And I've got a video in my DOM events in JavaScript course where I go deeper into this topic. So I'm going to include the link in the comments and description sections down below for you. And if you want to continue on this journey, you can join me there. I'll see you next time.